So they say that certain things bear repeating, especially when they're really worth it. And today I want to go over that. I want to talk about a workflow stack that I have been using for quite some time now, uh, ever since I kind of like conceived of it working for me. And I was like, I wonder if I could do this. And then I did it. And I've been using it ever since. And on top of that, I created um, a whole set of actions called MVP Actions 12 Chroma Plus Luma. Um, and it's, it's, it's about separating your data in such a way that gives you ultimate control. Now we have all kinds of different tools. You can see them over here. And full disclosure, we've done videos on these. But I want to do another video today and walk you through an entire edit. Now we're not going to spend you know, a whole lot of time on this. We're going to fast forward things, but I want to show you the concept of the workflow stack, especially when you need to do a real workflow, like a proper skin retouch and all that, especially skin retouch. Uh, automated stuff is cool. Sometimes we need to be efficient. Other times we need to do it exactly right. But I'm going to show you a workflow stack that I think is going to change the way you look at workflow stacks in general. Okay. There's a few different variations, but the one I'm going to focus on today is right here. This fourth one, NBP frequency separation, dodge and burn, chroma, luma, median. Median meaning that that's the blur operator used to do the uh, frequency separation. Okay. So we're going to run that real quick. It's going to let you know you should start from a background layer, which makes sense, or at least a stamp layer, because I usually start, you know, use that at the beginning. Now I'm going to decide what radius I want to use for my frequency separation. This might vary because I sometimes will run frequency separation multiple times in an edit. But for right now, based on what I'm looking at here, I want to have a little bit of control. So I'm going to try to, you know, in terms of like healing and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and run uh, maybe a little bit more. We're not going to try to do anything super, super detailed. So I don't need a real high. Most of my cleanup work is going to be dodge and burn, I would think. So we're going to let that finish. Now let's look at our stack real quick. We have, of course, the background file untouched. The low layer on the frequency separation is, in fact, Luma data. And not just a desaturation, but perfect Luma extraction. Very important to keep ourselves and our separation clean and seamless. Then, of course, we have the high layer of the Luma, which is what we chose and that radius that I chose to do the extraction, right? So there it is. I have a duplicate of it clipped down for healing. Pretty common frequency separation method. And then I have at least one layer for now in between high and low that I can paint in there and whatnot. But when I work in there, I'll only be working in Luma. We'll go over that in a second. On top of that, I have dodge and burn. Standard issue stuff that I like to do. You have curves popping upward like that. You have a curve popping downward like this. That's my dodge and burn. I do have a you know, con uh, excuse me, a contrast booster, which is pretty common when I want to dodge and burn. Sometimes I want to see a little bit more contrast so I can see what I'm doing. But on top of that, we have the chroma data and the clipped down blank layer that allows me to paint on the chroma data um, as I need to. We're going to get to that, but for now, I'm going to turn it off because this is where I do my work, most of my work. Now, kind of decide based on the image, what do I think I want to do the most of? Like, am I just going to kind of sort of slam through it with some frequency separation painting, or am I going to do real dodge and burning and healing? You kind of have to decide which direction you want to go or mix and match a little bit of both. There are some limitations in terms that you can't layer too easily because it can kind of get messed up. If I do a lot of um, dodging and burning and then I paint underneath it on this transition layer, for example, I'll have a false positive because I'll be brightening twice, things like that, but no big deal. So I'm going to start with healing. Okay, so let's, let's, of course, in the face is the focus here. So I'm going to do quick healing on this as a reminder, you know, this is pretty common stuff. So we're going to slam through it. I'm going to use my um, spot healing brush first. And let's go through this and just kind of clean up a few key things that, in my opinion, are going to be good for, you know, uh, that the, for the healing brush to, to solve. And of course, if we go to just our low layer, we'll see that we've obliterated a lot of high texture, uh, high frequencies, and that's going to allow us to remove them now with healing. So let's have a go. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to call that pretty good for healing. I think that worked. Mostly focusing, of course, on my high frequency areas that I think we just need to clean up. That only took just a few seconds, not a big deal at all. So now I think I'm going to work with dodge and burn because I really want to do this like the right way. So it's going to take a little bit of time to do this. I mean, not, not like 45 minutes or anything, but it should take a little bit of time to do this. But I'm still in Luma. In other words, I don't have the color data out yet. You'll notice even with all my healing, if I turn on Chroma, the healing is still gone. See, off and on because even though the the chroma data has been extracted from the original image any weird traces of the heels that i need to do can be fixed very easily with chroma now they're usually going to be on the really really obvious things for example if i turn off chroma if we look over here turn off our healing we have a piercing hole 
right here. Okay, see that? And when we turn on chroma, we get, oh, excuse me, turn on the healing. We get a strange color here. And that's because we, that was such a significant area of darkness that we removed that the chroma still reflects that something was different there. However, it's a very, very easy fix. We'll give you a quick tease of that. Let's go to our layer on top. I have a huge brush right now, so let me shrink that down real quick. There we go. Something like that. Okay, we're gonna put it like a 10% flow. I'm gonna choose an adjacent color. We're gonna talk about this more in a minute. I'm gonna choose an adjacent color on here, and then I'm going to uh, paint. And as you can see, there goes our problem. There goes our heel that was discolored, right, from this to that. Very, very simple. But we can still turn off chroma and continue our work. That is the benefit of all this. Everything is separated so we can work on things independently. I can work on the texture. I can work on the dodging and burning, which is effectively just a luminosity shift to change the perception of, of, of you know, textures and, and shape and light, if you will. And then I have the chroma, which I can then do all independently. So you might think, well, okay, that that piercing hole would have been fixed by itself on normal healing, sure. But by the, such a simple fix compared to everything else I want to do, I'd rather have my chroma and luma split, right? So anyway, let's go to dodge and burn. We're going to take a little time on that. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of time to do that. We'll fast forward through it all so we can get through it because I really want to show you guys the final or the near final of this now headshot. I'm probably going to crop it to a headshot and um, or at least close to final anyway. So let's do some dodging and burning. All right, so let's call that done. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it off and then on again. I like that. We kept a lot of our texture. I left it pretty natural. I'm not going to go dig too much deeper. There might be a couple of things I could have done, but for now, I'm going to leave it. And again, you might have seen in workflow stacks doing dodge and burn where people would use a desaturation layer to focus on dark and lights, which I've done for you know a decade or more. And I get that. It makes sense. But here, what we're doing is we're using Luma, which is effectively the same. I mean, it's so similar to desaturation. It's is useful, but it helps us to do a chroma luma split because then we have chroma separated. See, I can turn on chroma right now, okay? And a lot of times when you do dodging and burning, especially heavy dodging and burning, like you're really brightening a dark area or vice versa, you get some discoloration. And we can show that we have a little bit here. So we turn on dodge and burn. We see that under the eyes where I brightened a little bit, if you turn those on, it did work sort of here, right? Okay, but there's a little bit of discoloration. It's a little bit pinker than the rest of her skin. On top of that, we see some blues and the highlights and some grays. This is all natural. It's all natural. But when we dodge and burn, sometimes we enhance this natural thing and it looks a little bit funny. So here's where the chroma comes in. Keep in mind, just like on frequency separation below with the transitions, I can make multiple layers down here and change the opacity of the different areas that I work in if I want to paint you know, um, transitions in between high and low can do the same function, if you will, with chroma. You don't have to commit to painting on your chroma layer and ruining it. Um, you can clip down a layer, but you can also clip down another layer. Oops, let me clip that down. There we go. And that can also work. So we're going to call that chroma paint too, just, just to do it. Oh, chroma pain. That might be, that might be some kind of subtle hint. <laughs> All right. And now we have two layers and they work effectively the same way. So let's come back here. I'm going to go to like a 10% flow. And chroma works interesting when you paint with it because of the way it's set up. You pull the chroma data, which looks like this. Okay, that's one. And two, you've also, it, because of the blend mode it has to be in in color, doesn't paint the way you might expect. For example, if I paint with black, right, I start getting a desaturating effect. If I paint with white, I get a desaturating effect. Interesting. You really want to focus on the mid-tones, the mid-colors, if you will, the middle luminosities of the color in question. So if you were to pull a deep, dark color like this and paint, you're going to get like a grayish version of that color. It's going to be, have a little bit of color in it. And if you choose a highly saturated color version of the color, let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and saturate it, okay, and paint with it. Then you're going to get a very strong saturation everywhere. So let's say I want to try to fix this area up. I'm going to choose a color maybe right here and see if it works. And I can kind of just casually paint some of that. And keep in mind, I can always change the opacity. Let's look at this real quick, shall we? So off, on. Now you can see we've made it all pretty uniform, potentially too uniform. But again, that's why we have opacity. So I'll make it like 70%, 65%. Now I've really helped those colors clean themselves out. If I'm really concerned, like on a headshot like this, I'll spend some time like I'm doing here and I'll just kind of 
paint a color. Now you don't have to usually resample too often. You just need a nice mid range of what you want to do. The only choices you have to make is changing the, sh the tone. So you might make the hue a little redder and come back in just a bit here and there. We don't want to get rid of that highlight. Just a little bit of red here and there. Move that to that. That kind of helps, but I'm still going to make that like a 70. Zoom out to see what I'm doing. Let's look at the whole stack. Off, on, off, on. Okay. Now I changed the opacity of this fix that I did down here, and that's that's okay. We're just gonna make another layer. I, you know, usually I think about this a little more, but I gave you guys a demo. So we're gonna fix the little uh, piercing hole, real quick and simple. Okay, something like that. And that's another thing too. You know, you can always mask these layers. So if you're like, okay, I painted a bunch of stuff and I like it. But now I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit with a mask, just kind of tone some areas down. Okay, so off and on, not bad at all. And so the benefit of this, like I said, is that we can, I can make another one too, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. Um, you can neutral, not neutralize, but balance and, and force the, the chroma to be all the same tone kind of like the way you might use a, a different function like in Capture One or something. Um, whenever you change that tone, whether you need to correct the tone in general or you change it with Dodge and Burn or something else, you can come in and, you know, kind of unify it a little bit manually. And if you scale back the opacity a little bit, see now the forehead still has a little bit of that neutral highlight in it, but it's very much not as blue as much as blue as it was, right? I'm going to take it down to 65. Okay, from that to that. So look how the breakdown is. We start with, let's turn off our chroma. And turn off our dodge and burn. We start with our, you know, uh, frequency separation. I chose not to do any painting because I wanted to do dodge and burn. If I want to paint some areas that were going to be bigger and I knew I just wanted a wash of paint over it to smooth it all out, maybe an arm or something, I would paint it right now. Then I can dodge and burn on top of that. You see the result. And then I can turn on the chroma on top of that. And if I really want at any moment, leave the chroma alone, turn it off and I can come back and dodge and burn some more. I can even turn on the contrast booster if I really want to see what the texture is doing. Okay, and I'm good to go. And I can turn on the chroma and keep going. Okay, so the difference again, off and on. You get a result that's pretty expected looking from a real workflow skin retouch. And this could be more detailed as well. I just kind of went through a little bit quick. But we have now full control. When you see layer stacks like this on the right, don't be scared of them. All they are is control. Really, it's three functions. It's frequency separation that I'm not even using at this at this moment. Dodge and burn, which you're probably used to. And then the chroma stack, which is just however many layers you need to make sure you can control opacity independently. Tall, big, huge layer stacks are not to try to show off and they're not to try to show how technical you are. They're for control and flexibility. Don't be intimidated by them because oftentimes there's this huge tool that we bust out. And then when we're done, click on the top layer and stamp to a new layer. And, you know, either close that out and leave it there or delete it and you keep rolling on with your edit. And if you really want, you can just not stamp to new layer. And from here on out, you can start color grading. You know, you can, who knows what you can do. You can just have fun playing around with whatever. Yeah, maybe I'll make that a soft light. There we go. Literally color grading on top of the full edit. See, so that's kind of cool too, because you know, I mean, you can do this elsewhere as well, but we have this huge complicated edit underneath and then we start playing with color grading, even mastering layers. And we can do, you know, we can do things to the eyes and all that, but we still have this work down here. So at any moment, we can turn off our color grading layers if we want and come back down here and fix things, dodge and burn some more, fix our color correction some more, and then turn back our color grading and, and continue editing. This workflow stack is not supposed to be complicated or intimidating. It's supposed to give you ultimate control. And that's why I've created it. We have some variations on it. The first one is just dodge and burn for chroma luma splitting by itself. It's just dodge and burn. We'll run that real quick, show you guys a demo. I know I got rid of my edit, so I actually don't want to. I'll get rid of that gradient map. There we go. So we have the, um, well, you know what? It doesn't even matter. Yeah, let's just go ahead and run it. So we have the chroma luma split for dodge and burn, and that's all it does. You have chroma data separated, and then you have dodging and burning underneath. You can work with it, right? You have luma healing if you really want to do it. You know, we have duplicate clip down in case you want to do some healing real quick there. It's not frequency separation healing, so it's just designed for like major things and easy things, but mostly it's for dodge and burn, okay? We have the uh, frequency separation chroma luma median. This is without dodge and burn, so it sets up everything. Choose your radius like before. And then when it's done, we have frequency separation set up with Luma, and then we have Chroma separated so we can modify that as needed. So Chroma Luma splitting is, is not the end all, and it's not 
going to necessarily change your end result, but it potentially could change how fast you get there and how satisfying it is because you've probably been doing other ways to do color correction. You've done other ways to uh, fix when you dodge and burn all the texture properly and then you realize your color shifting happened. You probably developed other ways to do it. They're probably a little bit more um, involved or a little bit more tedious. This is so straightforward for that initial skin work perfection. And then you flatten if you want and you keep going on with the rest of your edit and whatever it is you were going to do with your entire shot. But really, when you do these layer stacks, these workflow stacks, I guarantee you, if you try it and we've had customers email me and say, oh my God, the Chroma Luma layer stack, I didn't know what to do with it at first, but once I figured it out, it has changed everything for me. Give it a go, give it a shot. It works brilliantly and gives you ultimate control if you're willing to open your mind to it and try something a little bit different. <music>